for something that a lot of people don't believe is actually happening here, and that's sex trafficking. Um, so many people view sex trafficking as something that happens overseas, something that happens, um, you know, like on the movie Taken. And mm-hmm. so last year we got together and we're like, you know what? We're going to tell people in our community what sex trafficking is, what this is, a, what this uh, means for your community, and what you can do about it to stop it, because it is right here in Washita Parish, and it is a um, it's something that affects every city, every race, every socioeconomic status, um, and especially in this over-sexualized culture where we are all so desensitized to what we are you know, being flooded with on a daily basis. So many people just view this as a huge giant that they can do nothing about. So mm-hmm. last year, we had this event at the West Monroe Convention Center, and it was a huge success. We sold out the tickets. It totally blew us away. And what blew us away further was actually... After that event and the success of that, all we wanted to do was just raise awareness and give money to some local ministries. Mm-hmm. But after that event, it was such a success that we um, we just had an outpouring of um, we had an outpouring of concern from the community, and so that led us to start our own ministry, and that's called Project Forty One for the One. So a year later, we are a fully functional, uh, newly founded. Um, Ministry and what we do is we fight sex trafficking right here in Washtenaw Parish. That's Monroe and West Monroe. We're in the trenches. We're on the ground. We're ministering to, to women and we're making a difference every day. Lindsay Nadler, our guest here. We're going to be talking about the event where you can get involved in. It's a week from this Saturday, the Whitest Snow Gala. And uh, but first, you know as well as I, Lindsay, it's kind of like um, looking into scriptures and uh, maybe hopefully saying, well, maybe this isn't really there when the truth smacks you in the face. In other words, there's a Titanic on the right uh, bow there, but I want to look over the left because the stars are out there. So you mean to tell me that this literally, when you say sex trafficking, mm-hmm. is happening here in Washita Parish? And if it's happening here in Washita Parish, it's in Lincoln Parish, it's in Morehouse mm-hmm. Parish, it's in Columbia. Um, so give us the down and dirty because this is something else. The reason why darkness is allowed to exist is because the light won't go in there. So you obviously are finding out some information uh, that, uh, you know, people are probably switching their radio stations right now because I don't want to hear this. Mm-hmm. Well, I understand that, but that's not part of the solution. Tell us... Uh, What's going on here? Okay. Um, You know, like I said, so many people view this as a problem that happens in other places. They don't understand that this is right here in this community. You know, they say that sex trafficking, prostitution is, you know, one of the most ancient of trades. And so what I like to point everyone's attention to is I-20. I-20 is a huge carrier for drug cartels. Drugs are being transported on I-20 all day long. A lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Um, And where you find one, you find the other. And so in an unsuspecting town like Monroe and West Monroe, where right off I-20 are um, particular hotels, it's very easy access for um, prostitution rings, for pimps and prostitutes to, um, to work those areas and so what a lot of what a, what happens a lot of times is they will travel from town to town so we'll go from Baton Rouge to New Orleans to Shreveport to um, Monroe and then all the way out to Vicksburg and especially mm-hmm. with the gambling culture that associates with Shreveport and Vicksburg you know you just have people running back and forth all day long on I-20 so it is right here um one of the other things that we did this past year is we went into OCC, which is Wash- the Washtenaw Correctional Center out at the prison, and we taught an eight-week life transformation class. Our first class, we had about eight to ten girls, and um, we were blown away by their stories. We were blown away by what they had survived um, from a very young age. You know, most are um, you know, abused in the home. Their first pimp is usually their dad or their uncle, um, or they come from a very broken home where drugs and alcohol are present. And some of them that we've uh, ministered and talked to were the beauty queens in high school, came mm-hmm. from a great family, but there was some instance of abuse or trauma um, where they then ran away from home and fell right into a culture where, you know, I just describe it as a den of wolves, where they're an easy target. You know, they are the lost sheep. They're the crippled sheep, you know, that is targeted very easily. So um, through that eight week class, you know, they all graduated. We helped several of them transition once they were released from prison. Um, Out of that first class, we had a girl 
that um, was able to give birth to a healthy baby boy mm. and she was able to bring that child into the world with a, in a safe place in community and she we threw her a baby shower and she was able to get everything that she needed um, we were also led to another girl in a very similar situation she was able to get into a fantastic recovery uh, program through um, one of our sister ministries in Shreveport and she gave birth to a healthy baby boy mm. so when you think about it, you know, our whole mission statement is rescue the one, value the one, transform the one. And our focus is on that every one person matters to Jesus. You know, we say for the one, that's from the scripture, Luke 15, one through seven, where Jesus chases after that lost sheep. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in numbers and the bigness of this, Mm -hmm. and we don't realize that when you change one person's life, like those girls in our Bible studies that then had babies, Mm -hmm. you're affecting the next generation and generations to come. It's about legacy, and that right there is how revival happens in your church, and that's how it happens in your community, and that's how it happens in our world. So, um, that was the first class, and then our second class had about 30 women in it, and, um, and we had about 20 of them graduate from that class. And we were able to help a handful of those girls once they were released from prison um, get the resources that they need. Lindsay Nadler is our guest here this morning as we are talking about Project 41 for The One and the White Snow Gala, which is going to be a week from this coming Saturday in the Washita Grand Plaza in downtown Monroe. Again, more on those coming up in just a second, but I wanted to frame up the issue here. Uh, I've been doing radio now 30 years, and especially this station now, 20 years there, Lindsay. Uh, the, we're living in a day and age where we have so many ways to communicate, we're not even communicating effectively. So when uh, where I'm going with this one is you go into OCC, so people's minds may automatically go up and say, well, you know, they did something they chose to do. And whoa, 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 CASA comes in here, and they help us to understand that through no fault of their own, children get into the court system so we think they're criminals that's not the case here and you had mentioned that the abuser if you will or the violator of a particular female could either be the parent or a close relative and uncle so boom they're no fault of their own and then they get lost and confused in their identity so i want them to hear clear that uh, you're not dealing with quote unquote convicted criminals in the mindset that you and i have been educated am i making sense Absolutely. Well, you know, a lot of times what people don't be- what people don't understand is that these women from a very young age, like I said, at a pivotal age, you know, 14, 15 years old, they're out on the street, you know, their identity, they're they're just being formed. That's a crucial that's a crucial age for uh, for anybody. And so when you are putting yourself, you know, when you're thrown into um, a severely traumatic day-to-day Experience, You know, what these women are subjected to is traumatic on the the highest scale you could possibly imagine. You know, drugs come right along with that. Either they're fed drugs all day long or they uh, have such a sense of shame and disgust that they are just trying to fill a void in themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things that we do teach is personal responsibility and the effect of their choices and the decisions that we make. Um, our verse for our class and something that we are constantly teaching them is Romans twelve two, and that's to be trans, uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing of your mind is literally changing the way you think in every mm-hmm. way about every single thing. Uh, we let them know that they are not victims. Things may have happened to them, but they are survivors and they are on the way to becoming thrivers, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Sure. So. A lot of the time when we meet these women in jail settings, they're either there because they got uh, stuck with the drugs that their pimp or their boyfriend had, or they were in a domestic violence situation where they finally, you know, they were either defending themselves or they decided to fight back for whatever reason. Uh, But they're the ones that always, you know, wind up behind bars. So. Lindsay Nadler here, our guest. Uh, we're going to get into the details now and then come back and uh, explore a little bit more here. Project 41 for the one is the local ministry now that was birthed literally out of last year's willingness to help others. And you're, um, you, the audience, can get involved because, as we say here at the Hill, ministry and mission work begin at home, bloom where you're planted. Well, something has now been uh, planted and starting to bloom, and this is going to be the second Whitest Snow Gala. By the way, the website, Project 41, that is the number 41, for the ones.com to find out more information on this and 
It first of all, I think uh, I've been wrestling with this myself, and I, I do that a lot because uh, I'm a Gemini. Um, is it a gala or a gala? <laughs> I think that we discovered it last year. It is gala. Oh, it is gala. It okay, is good. gala. I like gala. So, uh, but a gala it sounds a little bit more hoity-toity. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who cares? But it, yeah. it's more okay. So uh, it's it's a gala, and it's going to be. I like what you did. Uh, the Washita Grand Plaza. A lot of folks don't realize uh, what that is, where it is, and and it is a a treasure. I mean, maybe on the historic register. I don't know, but it's a neat thing. So let's get into the details of what it's going to be a week from this Saturday. All right. So the White as Snow Gala is going to be a incredible, life-changing event. This isn't your typical, you know, sit down, you know, just listen kind of stuffy fundraiser. Uh, we want people to be interactive. We want people to network with other uh, churches that will be there, with other people in our community, so that we can really be unified and come together. But it's January the seventeenth. Doors open at six thirty at the Washita Grand Plaza. Um, there's going to be heavy. Um, heavy appetizers uh, that are provided by Chef Eric Johnson. He's ca- um, he are they appetizers or hors d'oeuvres? Hors d'oeuvres. Oh, horses, sorry. Horses Dovers. Heavy. Is- yeah, heavy hors d'oeuvres. And he's also going to uh, provide a hot chocolate bar, which is going to be super fantastic. We've got a great band coming in from New Orleans. It's the Bailey Flores Band. Uh-huh. Um, so, incredible music. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be a silent auction. Um, Kelly Moore of Kelly Moore Bags is going to be there with her uh, brand new photo booth. So, it'll be a time to just have a blast. It'll be really interactive. Um, And then we are asking that you wear white. Um, If you're a female, you know, you can wear an all-white dress. Wear white in some capacity. Guys could probably just wear a white shirt um, and some nice pants. It is a formal event. But we are asking that everyone wear white, and that is to represent the cleansing blood Mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ and that he does make us white as snow. Um, What was the most, uh, not outrageous, what's the most memorable white person, uh, not costume, it's not a costume, but I mean dressed last year? (laughs) Tell me, I mean, I know somebody had to show up in a white tuxedo, right? No, they didn't, but I would love for someone to do that, to show up head to toe, white tuxedo, ruffles, the whole deal. That would be great. A white top hat as well. Yes, and a cane, (laughs) a white cane. All right, so now the tickets, you go to eventbrite.com, eventbrite.com, type in White as Snow Gala. G-A-L-A, 2015, and then uh, tickets and table sponsorships. Uh, going well, is there, I mean, last year it sold out, so people, could it happen, a uh, sellout any of this year? Yes, it oh. could. You know, we, you know, last year we actually opened up to where people could buy tickets the day of, right at the door. Uh, currently, tables are sold out, but tickets are going for $25, um, so you can still get your ticket, and we are encouraging everyone to buy groups of tickets and to be strategic in that, because we want people to know about this, and we also want to um, encourage awareness. So, like things like youth groups, um, you're right. you know buy some groups of tickets and be strategic in who you give those to and who you and invite. You know, if you just decided to buy five tickets, bring yourself and invite four other people that you feel mm-hmm. like you know need to know about this or are around you know people that are at risk. Bring them with you. So that's what we're encouraging people to do right now. And you can go um, to our website, project 41 for the onecom or you can find us on our Facebook page, Project 41. And we have a super easy link uh, to buy tickets. It can You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds from your smartphone. All right. You got time to hang or what? Yeah. We'll do another one. Let's stick, uh, stick around. Any question or comment, Lindsay Nadler is our guest here as we continue now on the Hill with Jeremy Camp. He knows. K-H-L-L, Richwood, Monroe, West Monroe. That is Kendall Payne. That's a Hill classic and modern day Moses on 100.9 FM. Jeremy Camp before that, and he knows. Rick Godley with you here on this Wednesday. It is January 7th, and if you're just tuning in, in the studio we've been talking with Lindsay Nadler with the Project 41 for the one and the second annual White as Snow Gala coming up on uh, a week from this coming Saturday and last uh, break we talked about uh, well a the issue b it's very real c it's right here yes in your backyard and Lindsay, as you may or may not know it could be right under the roof of one of the listeners we're listening here because one never knows where this issue and it's it's not even an issue i hate to even say that it almost trivializes um, the travesty of sex trafficking in washita parish so if you would kind of let the audience know a Again, 
how prevalent this is right here in our own backyard. Right. Well, you know, the sex industry is a multi-billion dollar worldwide industry. You know, it affects every city, every town, every state. And, you know, I like to give people a clear cut definition of what sex trafficking actually is. And defined, it means that it's any business that's either directly or indirectly provides sex related products, services or adult entertainment. Um, and what so, so many people don't realize is, you know, when we drive down the street and we see what we see on billboards or oh, we yeah. watch what we see on commercials, oh, yeah. you know, the desensitization of sexuality is everywhere. You know, it's it's so prevalent that we're almost passive about it because we feel like there's nothing that we can do. Sex trafficking, prostitution is one of the most ancient of trades and people always say. So it seems so big to people. But it is right here. It's right here in Washtenaw Parish. Um, like I said earlier, you know, I-20 is a mecca for mm-hmm. drug cartels. Um, drugs are transported all day long on I-20. And where you have a drug culture, you also have a sex culture. They go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And so an unsuspecting town like Monroe and West Monroe, uh, where um, hotels, small hotels, or right off the interstate, it's easy access um, for pimps, for prostitution rings to come in and... Um, and wreak havoc. So. Uh, truck stops as yeah, well. Truck stops as well. They're more it's than just huge. an economic boon to our area. But that being said, uh, this week, uh, a week from Saturday, the second annual White Snow Gala, I kind of find it neat that last year uh, a group of you came together with a heart to want to help others. And next thing you know, now it's like, ooh, you need to stay here and help uh, the area. So explain what happened last year's White Snow Gala, the inaugural one, Gala, Gala, and, uh, and then... <laughs> Um, now what's being birthed or has been birthed is that you are here now uh, as a local ministry. Absolutely. Well, last year, you know, we sold out to capacity. Uh, we had three ministries there that we just wanted to raise. Aw- we wanted to raise awareness and we wanted to be able to give a love offering to these local ministries. Um, the gala totally blew us away. We sold out. We were able to give money um, and we just had this hunger and desire and this outpouring from the community to do something. And so in a year's time, we are a fully functioning nonprofit organization. We're on the streets every day. Uh, we are are you know making a different making a difference right in our community with women that have um, been trafficked with women that have survived things that you would not even that you would never even believe that you could never even imagine mm-hmm. and we want to let them know that they are valued and that they can be transformed through the love of Jesus and it's only through Jesus that any of this has been possible that they're able to get the resources that that they need um, I could tell you story after story of how you know Jesus has just showed up and been instrumental in every small detail to get these women to safety to get them resources to open doors for them for job opportunities um, to be able to have babies safe, uh, mm-hmm. safely and, in a, and, and welcomed into a community of people that love them. And that is our whole mission, is to rescue the one, value the one, and transform the one. You know, when we say Project 41 for the one, that's from Luke 15, 1 through 7. Um, and that, and it's in that scripture, Jesus leaves the flock and goes after the one lost sheep. And these women are the lost sheep. You know, no one in society values them. They feel so ashamed. They would never set foot in your church. And so it's a gut check, Mm -hmm. you know, for the body of Christ. It's a gut check for you. You know, will you welcome her with open arms? Will you tell her that she's loved? Will you tell tell her that she's valuable? Not because of what her body can do or not because of how she looks or not because of what she does, but that she's, but because she is a child of God. And so that's something that we are always teaching that we're always saying is that, you know, God has value for you. You, you know, we're born with a destiny and a purpose. And um, as you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, your life is going to change. And folks can get involved. The second annual White Snow Gala is coming up and uh, go to eventbrite.com, eventbrite.com, type in White Snow Gala and you can get tickets there. Table sponsorships are sold out to find out more about the ministry. They have their own website, project41forthe1.com, and a Facebook as, uh, as well to make it um, well convenient for folks to find out more about you. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we could possibly say this morning to help you make this a, a not only success. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, dream, vision, things uh, beyond your wild. We talked about housing. I mean, uh, this, you, 
it's almost like you have no idea what you asked for. When you asked for, how could we get involved there, Lord, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And That's so, an understatement. <laughs> I know, I know. But I mean, along that line, um, you know, when you go into the prisons there, they got to come out. They need a place. So, I mean, we talked about off the air, you know, uh, you got a house. These girls need to, these women need to get to a safe place, a safe, con- a safe, protected environment. So, I mean, what's a dream in a... a- Absolutely. You know, our dream, you know, is to have our own... Uh, twofold our own safe house and then our own long-term recovery home for these women um, we are a uh, we are trained and mentored by a sister ministry of ours in Shreveport called purchased mm-hmm. have a very successful program we believe in seeking wisdom we believe in getting mentor and training and we believe in um, doing things excellently starting soon and starting small but um, big picture long term in a year's time we want to be able to have this home because the the level of trauma what these women need is so deep you know they need time to just heal Mm -hmm. you know there's such a rush in so many recovery homes and so many programs you've got to be up out on your feet you you need to be working and we do encourage that we do encourage job opportunities and you know um and serving but along with that is healing is a measure of healing and sometimes um we believe that that needs to happen first in order uh, for the same things not to keep happening over and over again. So long term, we want our own house so that we can um, so that we can love on these girls long term. All right. So that that's the big picture. Then uh, that picture gets, gets put together piece by piece by this coming uh, a week from Saturday. It'll be the 17th White as Snow Gala. And again, go over the details on that to entice people to come and let them know they will be asked for money to support the project. But tell them what the, it's going to be a fun night. Absolutely. Um, it's, we are encouraging everyone to come out in their best all-white dress um, or wear white in some capacity just to represent uh, the cleansing blood of Jesus. That's why it's called the Whitest Snow Gala. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna op- Doors are going to open at 6.30. There's going to be a band from New Orleans, the Bailey Flores Band. Chef Eric is going to be uh, providing the food, a hot chocolate bar. There's going to be a silent auction. Kelly Moore um, from Kelly Moore Photography is going to have her photo booth there. Um, it's going to be a great time to network and to meet other people. There's going to be a dance floor. It's going to be interactive. You're going to learn things there about um, the darkness of this uh, ministry, but also hear a lot of success stories. You're going to hear some dynamic speaking. Um, It's going to be an interactive, you know, up on your feet, really I hate to say fun because it's such a dark topic, but you know, we are providing hope Mm -hmm. and we are, um, we're all coming together to fight this together um, as a community. All right. And like you said off the air that uh, not everybody can do everything all at the same time. So that's why you got to find your little piece of the puzzle and fit in. Absolutely. You know, we say not everybody can do everything, but everybody can do something. And I just want to encourage every listener that that something right now would be definitely to get your ticket to the gala. Their tickets are $25. We're encouraging everyone to buy groups of four or eight, you know, buy those tickets up and then strategically invite. So if you know maybe your pastor or a youth group leader or even, you know, um, teenagers in your youth, you know, they need to know about this. They Mm -hmm. need to know about um, things, you know, being at risk and situations that you can get into, you know, to invite people that you feel like um, would have a heart for this or need to know about this. Um, Throw them in your car, come to the event and just come and learn and share hope with us. You know, I heard it put this way, and I always give him credit. He's uh, Greg Guthrie at Casa, and there's people are listening right now to you and me saying, you know, I don't think I have a heart for that. That is your heart telling you you actually do have a heart for it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's your brain trying to reason out that, may, no, no, you, your heart is being pulled. And uh, so even when you, if that thought even flashes across your mind, that means your heart is still tender. That's a good sign. Yeah. All right. Well, in, what else could we possibly say here this morning, well, Lindsay? Well, I will. I guess I'll just speak straight to the the business owners that may be listening. Sure. You know, oh yeah, go for it. I mean, if you need t- a tax write off, you know, this is a great place to come and um, and to invest in a ministry that you can feel confident in. Um, you know, we know that that's coming up, so you know we are fully functional and and ready to to go with all of that. Well, and so. also I thought um, the uh, silent auction too. I mean. 
Absolutely. If you are a local business owner and you would like to give your services or have anything auctioned off, you know, we do list all of our sponsors. We do list all of the silent auction um, donors. And so that'd be great advertising for you as well. Um, So if you are interested in donating anything, please contact us. Um, You can email um, info at project 41 for the one.com or just send us a Facebook message. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe you want to uh, volunteer your time, your services, um, your gifts, or maybe you want to partner with us financially. Those are the different ways that you can get involved. But even if none of that is for you, we absolutely covet your prayers. So I'm just going to ask every listener, if you feel led to, to just say a prayer for us and we would be honored and we would greatly appreciate it and and they could be an advocate for the advocacy as well and just talk about the ministry that is now uh, well less than one year old isn't it absolutely okay all right well Lindsay, thank you so much for your time and uh, I, I look forward to a good report okay thank you very much here's family four is five now on the hill 100.9 fm and let it be love